Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Between the Notes. This is episode eight, I believe. Um, if you haven't been watching, I go between the notes of all my music. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a few decades now, and I have music from solo piano to full production. <clears throat> Christmas music, not Christmas music, instrumental, choral, whatever. Between the Notes gives me a chance to talk about the stories behind the writing of the song and also the songs themselves. Today's um, episode, I kind of teased last week saying, writing music for the biggest stage in the world. Can you imagine what that might be? If you said Olympics, you are correct. I've been lucky enough <clears throat> in my career so far to write music for two Olympic Games, the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary, where Sam Carton, a good friend of mine, and I were uh, employed by ABC Sports through a company called Nonstop Productions to go up and write music using synthesizers of that period. Those of you that are in music know that in 1988, the synthesizers were a lot different. And um, we were sequestered in a small room where they would bring in the up close and personal segments then using sequencers and samplers and i think i did bring my trumpets up i use those on occasion we would write music in the morning and then they'd put it on the air that night it was pretty action-packed uh really amazing experience i wrote music for the um uh, let's see i wrote music for the uh, jamaican bobsled team that was the olympics they were kind of famous for uh, Bruce Jenner, as uh, he was called at that time, um, had some very interesting stories. Uh, Lynn Swan used to come and hang out where we were writing music. If you were uh, live back then and you watched the Olympic Games, you probably saw more of the Olympics than I did because Sam and I were so busy doing music on site that we really didn't get to see a lot of the games. Although I do remember watching um, the Americans play hockey. Um, they were uh, still basking in the glow of their 1980 Olympic gold against the Soviet Union, and uh, that was kind of fun. Well, anyway, that was kind of my first foray writing for the Olympics. 2002, I, oh, and we, uh, Sam and I wrote a song called Fire on Ice. I'll let it play in the background uh, while we chat about that. But that music was written about Dan Jansen. Um, many of you know that I'm originally from Wisconsin, which is the... The place uh, in the United States is probably best known for its speed skaters. Dan Jansen was one of the first superstars in that sport, and uh, I had a connection with him. So <clears throat> I wrote music for him with Sam called Fire on Ice, which I still perform once in a while. You're hearing it in the background. All right, fast forward now to 2002. Salt Lake City gets the Olympic Games. 9-11 happened in 2001. We weren't sure if the Olympics were actually going to happen in, the, um, in February. However, um, thanks to um, Mitt Romney, now a senator from Utah, um, and some of the leaders of the state and the Olympic movement, they decided to treat this whole thing like a unifying Olympics, where we're not going to let this terrorist, um, these terrorists decide how we're going to live our lives. So it was really kind of a special Olympics because of that. <clears throat> Sam and I, once again, this time we're asked to do a couple of things. First of all, the state of Utah had us write um, a CD called Light the Fire Within. If you were a school child or had school children during that time, they would have probably sung this song. Uh, songs like Light the Dream, Story of the Glory, Rings of Fire and Gold. It was a fun experience writing music for the Olympics that uh, was on the CD. Then Sam and I also wrote music for this album, Innovators 2. Many of you have, probably have Innovators 1, which was about innovative people. We decided that because of the Olympics that we would do an, an album that would talk about innovative people in the sporting world and most specifically the Olympic world. So here there's songs like uh, Donner and Den Don Oren, sorry, my German hammered that, which means uh, Thunder in the Ear that was written for Franz Klammer. Perfectione written for, um, oh shoot, what's her name? Uh, Nadia Komunich. And um, I wrote a song uh, once again called um, 
let's see, what was it called? Oh, oh, oh. The Shadow Catcher. And that was also about Dan Jansen. So two songs were about Dan Jansen. The Shadow Catcher talks about how he's chasing his shadow as he <clears throat> skates around uh, doing the uh, doing his training. Anyway, that was an ex fun experience, which we actually performed at the Olympics at Kingsbury Hall with uh, Nadia Comaneci in the audience, Bart Connor, and um, the Prince of Monaco was there, a few other luminaries. It's kind of fun. So that was another Olympic experience. I happen to have, uh, I was going to say singular experience, but uh, actually my second time. I, I was able to run in the torch relay. Here is an Olympic torch that um, I held right here and ran. It's not light, but not really heavy. I had I, And when you run the torch relay, um, I was given this torch. I can't remember who I received it from, but I remember giving it to Barbara Tanner, who just passed away here in Salt Lake City, famous um, philanthropic uh, businesswoman. Anyway, I, I, you hold this, and inside is a canister of, of gas, or you know, like propane, which lights the fire. And uh, anyway, here it is. Um, I, I've got some pictures here showing me in, in the white, lovely white outfit they give you. Um, little known fact, uh, when you get done, they say, would you like your torch? And you say, yes, of course, I'd love my torch. Uh, then you can buy it for $400. $400. So anyway, it's a great memory. Uh, not the first time I did that. I actually ran in the torch relay for in 1996 for the Atlanta Games. I got a torch back there, but I have to, I can't touch it anymore because one of my cats tipped it over and it broke. I have to go get it fixed, but I have two torches actually. But the culminating experience, and it's the last thing that I'll end with, the last story here before letting you hear the song that Sam and I wrote for the closing ceremonies, um, is we were tasked by Don Misher and his company out of Los Angeles, a great event production company. He said, we want a couple of Utahns um, to write the music for the closing ceremonies, most specifically for the flag ceremony. And um, that's what Sam and I did. And we had a chance to, to, to write this music. It's 10 minutes long, which is a little obnoxious. Um, to write music that long. Music kind of works when it's four minutes. You got enough time to do a A section, maybe an A prime and a B section, a, a bridge and then go back. But when you do something 10 minutes, you got to rely on a lot of uh, modulations and different themes and so forth. <clears throat> We're gonna, I'm going to play the entire 10 minutes um, and uh, give you an opportunity. But thanks to John Williams and, and Olympic music in general, you know it's going to have lots of fanfare, lots of bells and whistles. We used a choir. We also used indigenous instruments from different countries because this flag ceremony was where everybody at the closing ceremonies comes into the stadium, all mishmashed together, <clears throat> not with our teams. But we just wanted to do something that sounded... Uh, Middle Eastern, sounded European, sounded Asian, sound American, and Olympic. So uh, what an amazing experience. I will tell you uh, one kind of fun behind the scenes of the Olympics. So I conducted um, on this February, now I think it was February, I can't even remember the date, maybe February 5th, but um, it was really cold. It was like five degrees below zero. So it was very cold for the musicians uh, that, you know, they're, they're, especially the brass players, their, their embouchures were cold. The metal would stick to their lips. It was uh, one of those nightmare experiences. But we were all warned by the spirit of the Olympics. I was conducting the music while at the same time I had in my hand a camera. And I was taking pictures like this because I didn't want to miss it. So I know that's not very professional. But... Here I was conducting and taking pictures, and I felt kind of bad about it until I saw that <clears throat> the rock star Beck was doing the same thing as he was performing. Last the experience was back in the green room. I shared a, a locker as I got dressed in my outfit with um, Scott uh, Hamilton, Scotty Hamilton, the famous uh, um, figure skater. I had some really cool experiences chatting with him back in the back. And then we would go wait in this green room until it was our turn to go out and perform our song. So it was Earth, Wind & Fire, it was Kiss, it was Beck, it was Charlotte Church, it was Josh Groban. Uh, there were lots of luminaries back there. Uh, trying to remember now the uh, famous um, 
uh, what is she's a, a famous skater from Germany. Katarina Witt was backstage. Uh, I'll never forget walking out though. Um, I had to walk behind Kiss, behind Gene uh, Simmons, who was, as you and some of you know, he was famous for wearing his pants with the cutout rear for each cheek. <laughs> and he also wore like shoes like this high. And as I walked behind him through the tunnel to go out, it was it was kind of like you know, walking out behind him just about at cheek level. And all I could think of was uh, <coughs> large curd. All right, enough of that. I'm getting silly now. So here is Flags of the Nations Processional. Music by yours truly and Sam Carden. Me conducting for the 19, sorry, for the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time.